Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, if you want to understand a country's military, take a look at what its officer corps is reading. Military officers aren't just war fighters, they're trained to be thinkers, even intellectuals. Some of them have advanced degrees. In Russia, officers above the rank of colonel are required to read a book by a Russian nationalist called Alexander Dugin called The Foundations of Geopolitics. Dugin's book envisions a Eurasian empire with Russia at the center of it and then outlines a way to achieve that. In China, meanwhile, recruits are told to read The Origin and Goal of History. It teaches that China is successful because its culture is superior to the West's. Now, you might not agree with them, but these are serious books, and they promote the national interests of the countries whose officers read them. That's why they're assigned. And that makes sense. So with that in mind, what are American military officers reading these days? Well, let's see. A sub-literate pamphlet on how the United States is a disgusting, immoral country that must be changed immediately and forever. That tract is entitled How to Be an Anti-Racist. It is written by a former University of Florida professor called Henry Rogers, who, now that he is rich and famous, goes by his revolutionary name, Ibram X. Kendi. The book is garbage. Actually, it's worse than that. Not only is it embarrassingly stupid, it is poisonous. Kendi's premise is as simple as he is. Any system that produces unequal outcomes must be racist, period. That's it. That's the entire thesis. And Kendi applies it to everything. If some people make more money than other people, then the economy is racist. If Ibram X. Kendi decides there aren't enough black astrophysicists, then astrophysics is, by definition, racist. If it rains in a black neighborhood but not across town, then what you're watching is weather racism. Actually, Kendi didn't really write that, probably because he has no detectable sense of humor. But there's no question that he believes it. The book is that militantly dumb. So how do we respond to all of this racism in the United States? Well, Kendi provides a solution. Quote, the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-racist discrimination. He actually wrote that. In other words, his book against racism promotes racism. Now, you'd think that might be a red flag for people, contradicting as it does the founding principles of the country as well as basic human decency, but no, the people in charge love the book. It's all over corporate America. You can probably pick up a free copy at your HR department tomorrow morning if you want. But the military? It, you can't imagine the U.S. military would assign a book like that, recommended to every sailor in the U.S. Navy. Well, yes, actually. On Tuesday, Congressman Jim Banks of Indiana demanded an explanation for this from the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday. Here's how it went. Kendi's book states that capitalism is essentially racist. And Kendi is clear that racism must be eliminated. So yes or no? Do you personally consider advocating for the destruction of American capitalism to be extremist? Here's what I know, Congressman. It's a yes There's or no racism question, in the United States Navy. Admiral, you I recommended every sailor in the United States Navy read this book. It's a yes or no question. I'm not forcing anybody to read the book. It's on a recommended reading list. Admiral, did you read the book? I did. Admiral, you said you read this book. What part of this book is redeeming and, and qualifies as something that, that every, I think every sailor in the United States critical read it. about his own journey as an African-American in this country, what he's experienced. Let me ask you again, Admiral, do you expect that say, after sailors read this book that says that the United States Navy is racist, that we will increase or decrease morale, cohesion, and recruiting race into the United States Navy? I think we'll be a better Navy from having open, honest conversations about racism. Open and honest conversations about racism. Well, that would be nice. But it's an amusing line coming from someone who claims to have read Kendi's book, as Gilday says he has. Open and honest conversations are racist. Kendi said that many times. So let's say, open and honestly, you decided that you cared more about the way people behave than the way that they look. Let's say you took Martin Luther King at his word and judged people by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. If you were to do that, Ibram X. Kendi says you were a racist. Quote, the claim of not racist neutrality is a mask for racism. The language of colorblindness is a mask to hide racism. A colorblind constitution for a white supremacist America. That's the military's reading. So no, open and honest conversations are not allowed in Kendi's America. Here's the choice. You admit you're a racist or else you're a super duper racist. That's his position. It sounds pretty deranged, honestly. 
In fact, it sounds like an extremist ideology, just the kind the military is always warning us about. Keep in mind that tonight, right now, the Pentagon is investigating National Guardsmen who have posted unfashionable opinions on Facebook about the last election or may have voted for Donald Trump. So with all their investigators running around looking into people's thought crimes, how closely have they looked, as the Pentagon looked, into Ibram X. Kendi? Have they checked his social media history? Well, actually, Congressman Banks asked Gilday that question. Watch. In college, Kendi stated that white people are a different breed of humans and are responsible for the AIDS virus. Yes or no, do you personally consider the conspiracy that white people started AIDS to be an extremist belief? Sir, I'd have to understand the context. That is a simple statements question. Are made. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say. Admiral, here. this is a book I'm that you recommended here, sir, every defend, sailor in the United States Navy cherry read. picked quotes from somebody's book. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> do you consider the statement that white people created AIDS an extremist statement? I can't comment on that. <laughs> I don't need the context for that. So Admiral Gilday, what a mediocrity, will not defend the man he's just been promoting to the entire U.S. Navy. Now, that's odd that once you dig a little, you can see why he doesn't want to talk much about it. Not long ago, Kendi was invited to speak at the Aspen Ideas Festival, a place where ideas go to die. A room full of academics waited to hear his wisdom. During the question and answer session, one of them dared to ask the most basic question of all. How are we defining racism? How do you define it? Now, you'd think Ibram X. Kenny would be ready for that question, but he wasn't. Here's what he said. You talked about the importance of defining racism, but, I, but I, unless I missed it, which is possible, I didn't, I didn't hear your personal definition. Is there, is there one that you would offer us? Like, how do you define racism? Sure. So racism, I would define it um, as a collection uh, of racist policies that lead to racial inequity that are substantiated by racist ideas. <laughs> sure. A, a collection uh, of racist policies that lead to racial inequity that are substantiated by racist ideas. <laughs> so racism is racist stuff. Or as Kendi puts it, and we're quoting now, it's a collection of racist policies that lead to racial inequity that are substantiated by racist ideas, end quote. Right. But how are we defining racism? Ibram X. Kendi couldn't say. Despite making a bountiful living on the topic, getting rich, talking about racism, he hadn't thought how to define the word. Now, in a serious society, everybody listening, everyone in the room would have walked out and found something better to do. Bird watching, maybe. That's racist. Well, the so-called intellectual on stage turned out to be an idiot. So they should have left, but they didn't. They just laughed nervously. They were worried if they said something about what had just happened. If they pointed out that the former Henry Rogers is, in fact, a fraud, they would be denounced as well. This is how mediocre people control entire societies with implied threats. Go along or we'll punish you. So they don't say anything. The funny thing is, in his own book, Kendi admits that he himself is a racist. Here's a definition. Quote, white Democrats stood aside and let Bush steal the presidency on the strength of destroyed black votes. Bush's team transitioned that winter. I transitioned into hating white people. White people became devils to me, but I had to figure out how they came to be devils. So this is the man that Admiral Michael Gilday, it's hard to believe that Admiral Michael Gilday has any power in the United States military, but he does. And this is the man Admiral Michael Gilday believes the entire U.S. Navy should study. Imagine working for someone like Admiral Michael Gilday. Most normal people cannot even imagine that, so they're leaving the military. One Marine told us that military, a military history training session was replaced with mandatory training on police brutality, white privilege, and systemic racism. He reported that several officers are now leaving his unit, citing that training. Another service member told us that their unit was required to read White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo, which claims, and this is a quote, white people raised in Western society are conditioned into a white supremacist worldview. An airman told us their unit was forced into a racist exercise called a privilege walk where members of the wing were ordered to separate themselves by race and gender in order to stratify people based on their perceived privilege. 
It's depressing if you think about it. Good people driven from military service, many of them serving generationally because their fathers and grandfathers did, but having to leave now purely because of the extremist ideology of its leaders. It's crushing if you think about it. But it's also scary for all of us. We need the military. The Pentagon is in the Department of Education. It's not the DMV. We have to have it. It's essential to the survival of the country. But the commissars in the Biden administration don't care. They're not slowing down. They are intensifying the political purge in the ranks. NASA just announced its new mission has nothing to do with space. The new mission is about applying the principles in Ibrahim Kendi's book. The new mission is equity. At NASA, we're on a mission of equity, launching opportunity. Equal opportunity to challenge and inspire. To learn and thrive. To reach those we've never reached before. To use science, data, and technology to advance equity. To shatter boundaries. And break down barriers across America. To create a better future. We hope you'll join us on this mission. A mission of equity. Are you going to join the mission of equity? Can you define it? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.